Hi. Hello again. We're in the Pure Worship book, so again we're going to be reading from the screen, so we beg your indulgence as we yeah. awkwardly transition from one to the other. Mm -hmm. Okay, here it goes. This is page 14 of the Pure Worship book. It's an overview of Ezekiel. We made the point before that they <laughs> they spent 13 pages and we still haven't got to Ezekiel. It looks like we're getting there now. This is an overview of the book, but but I guess we should add that we go right back to Genesis on page right 15. Right, the next page, yeah. Okay, so anyway, here's the overview of the book. Here's uh, how they describe the four portions of the book. Generally speaking, the book of Ezekiel may be divided as follows. Chapters 1 to 3. In 613 BCE, while living among the Jewish exiles in Babylon, Ezekiel sees visions of Jehovah and is commissioned to prophesy to the Jews living by the river Kebar. Then there's second division, chapters 4 to 24. Between 613 and 609 BCE, Ezekiel delivers prophetic messages consisting primarily of judgment against Jerusalem and her rebellious, idolatrous people. Chapters 25 to 32, the third section, starting in 609 BCE, the year the final Babylonian siege of Jerusalem began, Ezekiel's message of judgment shifts from Jerusalem to surrounding enemy nations, Ammon, Eden, Egypt, Moab, Philistia, Sidon, and Tyre. And then the, f the fourth section was chapters 33 to 48. Starting in 606 BCE, with Jerusalem and its temple lying in ruins hundreds of miles away, Ezekiel focuses on a message of hope, the thrilling restoration of the pure worship of Jehovah God. And then they have two, two uh, summary paragraphs at the bottom, the first of which reads, The book, book of Ezekiel is thus basically arranged chronologically as well as topically. Prophecies about the destruction of Jerusalem and its temple come before the bulk of the prophecies about the restoration of pure worship. That makes sense for the restoration prophecies presuppose that worship at the temple had ceased. In addition, Ezekiel's prophecies against the surrounding enemy nations, chapters 25 to 32, are inserted between his judgment messages against Jerusalem and the prophecies about the restoration of pure worship. Commenting on Ezekiel's judgment message to the nations, one scholar observes, quote, They form a suitable transition from the declaration of God's wrath to that of his mercy towards his people, because the punishment of their enemies is in itself a part of the deliverance of his people. End hmm. of quote. Well, I guess we could say that we don't have a problem with the division of the book into these four parts. Generally speaking, I agree mm -hmm. that's the format of the book. The problem is that you do some things here that <laughs> you shouldn't do. Oh. Namely, that all the dates are wrong. <laughs> Every date here is wrong. Yeah. Because no one agrees except the Watchtower Society with its, with its uh, anchor back in the days of Nelson Barber. Nelson Barber gives you this date for the beginning that identifies the 70 years of exile with the 70 years of the destruction of the temple to the restoration of the Jews. That's all inherited really from Nelson Barber and a few other mm -hmm. peripheral people in the 19th century, yeah. but you still hold it. You've moved it one year to 607, but every other day here is wrong because of the 607 And the assumption. reason they have to hang on to it is because they want to keep the 1914 yeah. date. Now, Ezekiel went in the second exile, but the second exile didn't happen until about nine, 598 or 597. The first exile was Daniel's back in the first year of Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. Look at Daniel chapter 1 if you want to see information on that. So the first exile is a few people, important mm -hmm. people in the days of Daniel yeah. and his three companions, 604 or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. And the second exile is Jehoiachin, Je Jeconiah, in the years 598, 597. And then the destruction of the temple in 586 brings us to the end of the reign of Zedekiah. So all of that is completely botched here. Mm. But that brings us to the geographical aspect of this. What do the first three divisions of the book have in common? 
Well, they, they're they about the Jews. The Jews in exile. The Jews uh, uh, not not in exile. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. The Jews <laughs> and, in Babylon. Yeah. In the and, first part. And then the Jews' neighbors. Their neighbors as their enemies. The, the neighbors, again, are Ammon, Edom, Egypt, Moab, Philistia, Sidon, and Tyre. They're all immediate neighbors or... Yeah on the periphery of ancient Israel. So there's a lot of geography and national designations. So by the time you get to the fourth division of the book, which they date at 606, which is actually uh, the year after the destruction, which by normal chronology, everybody else agrees would be 585, mm -hmm. 585 BCE, Jerusalem and its temple lying in ruins. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel focuses on a message of, of hope, one, the thrilling restoration of the pure worship of Jehovah God. Geography disappears now. Yeah. And that's why I was so encouraged by what this anonymous scholar <laughs> says. Which, let's yeah, let's it, read that again. Well, Just, that's curious that they say, commenting on Ezekiel's judgment messages to the nations, one scholar observes. This, this is not the way you write. You tell people who the scholar is and why he's in there. That's responsible journalism and scholarship, right? To, yeah. cite, to cite your sources. He's not a Jehovah's Witness. Well, that's, I'm pleased to yeah. report that that's right. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the reason. That's your only hint. <laughs> that's why you can afford to get away with one scholar observes. Yeah. I'm pleased to report that they accurately translated, accurately transmitted what the scholar said. And that's how yeah. I could find out who it was, because I put in the quote, and his name came up. Yeah. His name is G. Curry. He was an Anglican clergyman, a DD. Mm -hmm. If you remember, I, I, I remember I had a pioneer partner who, who said, that, Doctorate of Divinity, ha ha. It really means dumb dog. And he got that, of course, from Rutherford. Yeah. So he was a veteran of the Rutherford days. So here you have a scholar who my pioneer partner called a dumb dog, a doctor of divinity, who actually brings some light to this analysis yeah, of yeah. the book. And that's in Cook's commentary, right? Yeah, the famous Cook's commentary. G. Curry was, a, I guess, a fairly obscure Anglican clergyman, but they all had, the, they all had in common, those clergymen, that they were trained in Greek and, and trained Rus in Hebrew. And Russell used him, right? <laughs> yeah, Russell used this Cook's commentary yeah. quite a bit. But, yeah, it is a good quote because he's he's telling you it's about it's about God's wrath and his uh, first okay I'm going to reread it <laughs> <laughs> they form a suitable transition from the declaration of God's wrath to that of his mercy towards his people that would be Israel because the punishment of their enemies Israel's is in itself a part of the deliverance of his people Israel again yeah so, yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. Curry is right that the mm -hmm. book is written to them. Yeah. It's not written to us. It's written to Israel in exile. So what would they have understood, Ezekiel, reading this, and Israel listening to it? To be saying about pure worship. Yeah. yeah they, what, is the what, is the, what are the necessary conditions of pure worship to a Jew living during the period of the exile? That they, they would be not in exile, restored to their land and the temple there. Can we confirm that? Well, we can. Mm -hmm. Let's just look briefly at Daniel, for instance, who is, of course, one of the three great prophets of the exile, the other two being Jeremiah, who stayed in the land until he was mm -hmm. dragged, basically, to Egypt, and Ezekiel, who was in the second exile, as we said, and Daniel, who was in the first exile. Mm -hmm. What does Daniel think of as necessary to the restoration of pure worship on earth well we don't have to guess if you go to daniel chapter 9 we have the answer here's a portion of what daniel prays about in the only chapter by the way where you, the divine name occurs in the original text of the of hebrew daniel. and daniel mm -hmm. here's what he says O lord according to all your righteous acts let your anger and your wrath turn away from your city jerusalem it's in desolation at this point right mm -hmm. your holy hill because of our sins because of the iniquities of our fathers notice he says our sins as well as the father's sin mm -hmm. jerusalem and your people have become a byword among all who are around us now therefore O our god 
listen to the prayer of your servant, and to his pleas for mercy, and for your own sake, O Lord, make your face to shine upon your sanctuary, which is desolate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't plead it on behalf of the admittedly sinful or unfaithful Israelites. He pleads it on behalf of God's own name and his reputation. Yeah, his own reputation among the nations, where it's it's becoming a, a slandered by their behavior. Which Ezekiel also says it was profaned. He, he mm -hmm. is the word Ezekiel uses during the same period. Mm -hmm. And then if you go down, this is just a portion of the prayer. But the answer to the prayer, starting at verse twenty-four, Gabriel comes. The man Gabriel comes, and what does he say? Seventy weeks are decreed about your people, your people and your holy city to finish the transgression to put an end to sin to atone for iniquity to bring in everlasting righteousness to seal both vision and profit and to anoint a most holy place mm. so the necessity to restore the people so that they can restore the pure worship by means of building the temple and so, rebuilding yeah. the holy city yeah. so he puts it to the the people and the place is important yeah not to us, however, if no. we're trained as witnesses. And then there's Ezekiel, the other great prophet of mm -hmm. the Babylonian exile. And here's a few things from that famous chapter that they're still using to this day, which is the Gog of Magog chapter mm -hmm. 38. For instance, what's the Gog of Magog invasion about? Well, Ezekiel says, after many days you will be mustered. In the latter years you will go against the land that is restored from war, the land whose people were gathered from many peoples upon the mountains of Israel, mm -hmm. which had been a continual waste. So there's no way to make this spiritual, you can, mm -hmm. you can note. Its people were brought out from the peoples and now dwell securely, all of them. And then down in verses 14 to through 16 mm -hmm. of Ezekiel 38, Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to Gog, Thus says the Lord God, the Yahweh God here in the Hebrew, on that day when my people Israel are dwelling securely, will you not know it? You will come from your place out of the uttermost parts of the north, you and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great host, a mighty army. You will come up against my people Israel like a cloud covering the land. Mm -hmm. In the latter days I will bring you against my land, that the nations may know me, when through you, O Gog, I vindicate my holiness mm -hmm. before their eyes." Yeah, so Israel is Israel, and geography is geography here. You can't afford to ignore it. Mm -hmm. So I would say read the whole chapter, chapter 38 of Ezekiel, and read the whole chapter 9 of Daniel. And the links are? Uh, we're going to link our Daniel playlist, and we're specifically going to link the 18th video in that in that uh, playlist, which is called 607 BCE, Jerusalem and the Name. But since you're going to have the playlist on, we're also saying you might want to start with video 15 to get a better idea of chapter 9 of Daniel and the whole discussion. So that's diving into the playlist in chapter 9 of Daniel. Yeah. But if, if you want a, a playlist of all our playlists that we would recommend for dialogue with witnesses successful dialogue with witnesses yeah. where, where they they're really f quite comfortable talking mm -hmm. about daniel they love it yeah and it unravels a lot of the the badge issues of witnesses mm -hmm. that one book it sure does yeah so we would recommend it so the whole playlist really is adapted to use with with witnesses mm -hmm. directly that is what what can you talk about in the individual chapters of daniel that relate to the name Yes, the chronology, the kingdom, because that's the big kingdom book of the Old Testament, mm. and the neutrality issue. So you're covering many of the the distinctives that make Jehovah's Witnesses mm -hmm. think they are the true religion. Mm -hmm. See you yeah. soon.